Well, hello everybody. My name is Sarah and this is Pearls of Wisdom with Clean Intermittent Fasting. Welcome. This is just a place where we chit chat, we share a cuppa, mm -hmm. talk about food and the emotional relationship to food. Oh, you didn't think you had one? <laughs> well, my whole life has been about food and the scale and, you know, will these genes fit? Can I lose weight? The next great diet? All of that stuff. Wasn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy? You know, I, my head still has the default into that. It just right back to high school. I started gaining weight at nine years old. I, um... I had to get a bra between the summer of third grade and fourth grade. I got my period then, and it was like, I just, I must have been a child. But, you know, I was like thrust into early girlhood, womanhood. And that's when my weight began to do what weight will do. <laughs> and it went up, and up and up. And so, um, it it's... It's been a while. I weighed, the most that I weighed was about unpregnant, not pregnant, was about um, 10 pounds less than I weighed at my full nine months of pregnancy. And, um, and it was funny because both times I got pregnant, I started at the exact same weight and um, got up there. And I only put on I think about 33 pounds with each with each baby and I, re I just remember it was a husband and wife um, OBGYN practice that I went to and they told me they'd put me in the hospital if I gained much more weight and it's like I would see these people that these women that gained like 50 60 70 pounds and it's like I want I want your doctor they must give you permission to eat isn't that sad and it was right around the corner from McDonald's. And so after my weigh-in, I'd always go there to, like, you know, just soothe my beat-up from the doctor about gaining too much weight. Crazy, isn't it? And, you know, I was good for 33 pounds just eating, right? <laughs> so I was definitely a compulsive overeater. I was... Um, I, I had a roommate at one point, my, my best friend Barbie, and she um, she was a nibbler. I wasn't a nibbler. I, I wasn't, I guess I snacked. Weight Watchers taught me how to snack. Isn't that something? But she was a nibbler. I, I just remember her preparing things and nibbling along the way as she cooked. And I was not that way at all. I was like, wait until I get to the table and then chow freaking down, you know. But a lot of a lot of bad habits and a lot of good habits have come from my food journey. Right now, I'm clean, intermittent fasting. And so I have my OMAD each day between th two and three. And it is concise. I sit and I eat until it's over girly. And then I have to go into the bathroom and brush and floss because that's what I do. Because it tells my body and my head and it's part of my routine. You're done. You're done for the day. And, um, you know, so I have foods that, that um, you know, I've taught myself a lot about foods and my binge foods, my trigger foods as one of my um, clients slash friends says non-alcoholic foods. Oh, she's so right about that. I love that. Um, I love that term. She went to a conference about, I think it was an OA conference, and there were all kinds of breakout workshops, and um, she thoroughly enjoyed it. It was last week, and she lives in California, um, sober eating and things like that. And she learned a lot, plus, you know, she, through networking, she found a new food sponsor, so good for her. Um, you know, sponsorship is important, especially in the beginning. I had very, very strong OA by the book 
um, actually by the page, there was orange and gray sheets. And I joined in 77. I think it was before the birth of my baby. Maybe it was 78, right after the birth of my first child. And, um, you know, I just learned all about the emotional connection to the addiction. And I'd been carrying it around with me for two decades and never had the aha moment. And it was such a blessing. I just remember it was at this bank and it was, you know, downstairs in the basement. And, and it was just, it was just the beginning of the journey of like connecting dots. And after 20 years of eating impulsively, compulsively, and addictively, um, I began to like learn things and, you know, if, especially with food addiction, right? It's 10 steps forward and 12 steps behind and then repeat. And until the habits become part of your daily routine. And now it's just second nature, everything that I do for myself. I'm a big fan and promoter of chronometer and kitchen scale weighing for those that need to get like the discipline down. And it worked for me for a long, long time because first of all, the food is posted. Second of all, it's weighed. So there's an integrity and an honesty in doing that. Then for sure, you know what is going on if something goes awry. And so it, it will tell on you. <laughs> and so right now I'm just eating intuitively. I finally got in touch with my brain, my gut brain, and have been able to identify true hunger, true not quite full yet girly, and um, okay girly, one more bite and you're going to get into that like a little bit above the nose <laughs> in the water or the food trough and you're going to be in trouble and so it takes a long long time so don't beat yourselves up with your food journey because that's just the way that it is you don't have to have cigarettes or you know illegal drugs or alcohol to survive but you do need to have food for sustenance for growth for health for all of the you know the reasons and so we, we do have to, like, somehow get to this making peace with addiction slash nutritional slash emotional needs of foods. And certain foods will bring you right back to, like, how it used to be. They're comforting. We love them. But then there is portion distortion. And I had a huge portion distortion um, problem from the get-go with overeaters i started using a small fork small well look at this you know it's a small little mug little plates little bowls and it's always been part of what i do and you know what it works and that i love about my food journey is that so for almost 50 years i've been using um or 45 years i've been using the smaller utensils and plates, etc., for my meals. And so it definitely helps with my portion distortion. And I've gotten to the place with my, with my overeating, my addictive eating, my sugar, food, and carb addictions that I can have what works for me in smaller quantities. I had to match the brain here with the brain here because I learned that I could eat some things that I couldn't eat in safety. Now I can eat in safety with my OMAD. Smaller portions. My brain, my upstairs brain finally, you know, understands that there is no food deprivation in my food plan. And so if I'm having something, I don't have to have the whole thing of it because I can have it again. And so it, it's a gift. It's truly a gift. Um, and so I don't know if it, if it means that I work towards it or God gave me this gift, but I'm able to have something in a small portion that relieves that deprivation feeling and yet doesn't have me 
going back for more and the clean plate club member and everything else I am a clean plate club member though because what I put on my small plates and bowls I do eat all of and so but I've gotten used to what the portions look like how they are something doesn't have to be filled to the top or the plate doesn't need to be like overflowing and dripping <laughs> you don't need a, I don't need a towel underneath my plate to hold everything in to enjoy it so if it's a bowl of something it doesn't need to be to the very top etc etc and so I feel really blessed is it easy every day well I have gotten used to it I have you know when you've been doing it for a long time especially down to the clean intermittent fasting and OMAD it's such an unbelievable gift that I don't tamper with it you know I don't have a flavored coffee I don't have a flavored soda in the clean intermittent fasting that's what it is I do add some either pink Himalayan salt or Redmond salt to my waters if I'm not having like a Gerl Steiner water or something like that because it does um, help with the electrolytes through the day because it's, it's summer and isn't summer wonderful oh god how I love summer the the eating lighter and the beautiful colors of the veggies and even the the berries that I'm allowing myself now it's just it's such a wonderful place I love every single day and I never felt such an appreciation as I do now and I don't know if it's from the two years of the pandemic plus two plus years and then working at that grocery store where we had to wear black all day and it was under fluorescent lights and it was in a freezing freezing cold place that they they just could not they could not make it warmer they said there's no heat in the place and then they put on the air conditioning on top of that and it was just like a, you talk about utility waste or you know energy waste wow and so after those three plus years of it felt like a lockdown even when the pandemic weaned a little bit um you know I, I just love the freedom of it today it's the world is just colorful the the I can wear colors when I do my instacarting and I can eat colors now and it's just it just feels great every day is precious and I appreciate it and I hope that you do too thank you so much for listening this has been Sarah with clean intermittent fasting and what I do in a day thank you for watching I'll see you here the next time bye-bye for now